Good morning. Welcome to Community Presbyterian Church. As followers of Jesus, we welcome people of every race, nation, creed, orientation, and opinion. It's wonderful to have you here. Please sign the fellowship pads as they are passed down each row. And if you have a prayer that you would like included in our prayers today, there's that blue prayer card in the pew racks. Fill that out. An usher will be around to collect them. One of the really cool things about being in the Presbyterian Church USA is that we're connected to all of the other Presbyterian churches um, in our nation. And one of the really cool things that we do is what we call neutral pulpit. And what that is, is when there's a call committee for a church, when they're looking for a new pastor, um, that has to stay confidential because uh, if, if they uh, find out who's looking and, and they say, oh no, our pastor's looking, and they, they all kind of freak out. So we need a, a confidential place for the pastor and for the church. Sometimes when they want, they're interested in a candidate, they got to keep that amongst the, ca- the calling committee because once a church finds out, they're like, did you hear who they're looking at? <gasps> did you hear? You know, and, and so they need to keep that confidential. So what we do for them is provide a place to come and to meet each other and hear um, preaching and have that happen. So today we welcome Superior Congregation. They're all right here. Okay, they're all right there. And they're not looking at me, so no fear. Okay, they're all right there. And this is Jake right up there. Wave. Um, a really cool thing about Jake is that, yes, yes, very cool. Um, a cool thing about Jake is when he was going through the process to become a pastor, I was in charge of the uh, Presbytery Committee that oversees them, so it's very fun to have him here today um, preaching with us. I also hear there's a really important football game today. So we promise, Jake and I promise, you will all be home by 3.30, okay? All right. Let us stand and call one another to worship. Bless the Lord. The Lord moves through all of creation, sustaining life. God causes plants to grow and we are fed. Let us sing to God all life long. Let us join in singing from the Purple Hymnal, number 388. Please join me in our prayer for a faithful discipleship based on Psalm 139 printed in your bulletin. Sovereign God, may we sense your every moment of our lives and make our entire life a living prayer to you. Search our hearts and know us completely as we center ourselves again and seek your grace, saying, your love and grace are transformative, yet we are afraid of change. Because we are afraid of change, we forget you call us by name. We follow selfish goals and deny that our ways harm others and hurt your world. Forgive us. Help us to be molded by your grace and be willing to be transformed by grace. Create in us new life and a resolve to share the blessing of this new life with all people. Friends, as we come out of a time of reflection and silence, believe the good news. God is calling us, 
redeeming us and renewing us in the Spirit to reflect the love and grace of Christ. Hallelujah. I invite you to uh, sing with me, Breathe on Me, Breath of God, number 286 in the Glory to God hymnal. <clears throat> and we invite the young people to please come join Jake up front. I think they're all still down the hallway. Here they come. Hi there. <laughs> Hi, buddy. Is all here? right. Some excitement. <laughs> Well, hey, good morning, everybody. How are you? Good. Good? Okay. All right. Hi. Simon, how are you? Are you good? Hi. Yeah, you're good? Okay. Well, hey, today we're going to be talking in church about uh, an invitation that Jesus gives to people who follow him, and those words are, come and see. And so... Uh, that to me sometimes means we have to stop and look around. We have to look around. We have to see. We have to come and see some things. So if we were to look around, what do you see right now? What's something that you see? People. People, yeah. There are lots of people. Okay. What's something that you see? The pews. The pews. Okay. Simon, what's something that you see? His eyes. Your eyes, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Hi. What do you see? What do you see? Lights, okay. And what do you see? Fans. Okay. Well, sometimes when we look to see things, we have to have a few tools to help us, right? And so sometimes when I stop to look and see, one of the things that I like to do is look for birds. And so I brought some binoculars today. Okay. So these are just small binoculars. You want to look through those? What do you see now? <laughs> okay. Is anybody in the choir making faces at you? <laughs> oh, Susie. Yeah, there's a, there's a wave over there. Okay. Yeah. All right. Here we'll we'll pass those down. Okay. I see some of paint. What do you see? You can hold them if you want. You want to hold on them? Get them. Get them. There you go. Yeah. There you go. See anything? Do you see anything? What do you see? 
A face, okay. Was the, was the face happy? Okay, good. Simon, do you want to look through them? Here, we'll pass them down. See? You see mom? <laughs> How do you see me? What do you see? Yeah. Can you All right. The land? Pass those down. See a lot of people. Okay. You see a piano. Okay. Great. Well, sometimes we have to have tools because sometimes things are harder to see than we expect, right? And birds are really good at being harder to see than we expect. Uh, my wife makes fun of me because uh, I like to bird. And so sometimes I'll be like, what kind of bird is that? And she'll say, flying bird <laughs> or swimming bird. But I brought some pictures of some birds to show you. So do you see that bird in there? See the bird? Okay. Can you see the bird? So that's a green heron. And that was hanging out in a tree in our backyard. Okay, what about these guys? Do you see these guys? Yeah, kind of like a duck. Anybody know what those are called? Those are tundra swans. And they landed in a field on my drive to work. Okay, what about this one? Do you see the bird in this one? Do you want to point to it, Simon? Snow. Yeah, there's snow. And look, there's the bird right there. Do you see that? It's a chickadee that's flying. Okay, last one. Do you see the bird? <laughs> oh. Do you see it? Yeah, right there. So that's a that's a little downy woodpecker that was at a feeder outside my window. So sometimes we have to slow down and look at things, and that slowing down helps us remember that when we look out and see things in the world, that the world is an incredible place filled with God's love and God's grace and that God cares for us so deeply and cares for creation so deeply. I'm always amazed when I look out and stop and, and, and remember those words, come and see. So I invite you today to take some time to look around and see what's around you and see how it reflects God's love and grace for all of us. Okay? So let's pray, okay? And we'll do an echo prayer. An echo prayer is where I'll say the prayer and then you say it back, okay? So let's pray. Dear God, Dear God. thank you for your love and grace, for the beauty that surrounds us, and everything that we can see, help us to share your love and grace with all people. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Hey, thank you for your attention today.
Our reading this morning comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 43 through 51. So today we'll be looking at this final uh, section of the first chapter of the Gospel narrative according to John. The call Jesus extends to both Philip and Nathaniel. I invite you to uh, listen to these words with me and imagine the images that they, they paint. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said, follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, the son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to Philip, can anything good come from Nazareth? Philip said to Nathanael, come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him, he said of him, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked Jesus, where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And Nathanael said to, and Jesus said to Nathanael, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened up, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Friends, we end our reading from John's Gospel with the image of heaven opening up, and angels of God ascending and descending upon God's chosen one. Let's pause to pray. Chosen one, you call us to come and see. Open our eyes with grace to see the new life of discipleship you invite us into. Help us where we don't understand or struggle to believe, especially when our doubts keep us from seeing anything good coming from life's broken edges. Remind us of your care through these words. Be our refuge and our hope as we move into the flow of your call. Amen. You've got to see this. I invite you to remember a time when you have heard these words. You've got to see this. Think about who said them to you, and think about what you were invited to see. Do you remember what you were doing when you were interrupted by this invitation to come and see whatever the sight may have been? Do you remember what you felt when you saw the sight? Okay, I'm going to move away from a little bit of Presbyterianism where everything's decent and in order to allow you to turn to your neighbors and share for about two minutes what you remember about that 
invitation. You've got to see this, okay? So share those stories and we'll come back together. Okay, so I can get you home before the Vikings play. Uh, we'll, we'll come back together. Anybody hear any interesting stories? Anybody want to share an interesting story? All right, well, a number of weeks ago, when uh, the skim ice was forming on the pond outside of our house, my wife Kate said to me, you've got to see this. I was still waking up from sleep as Kate was standing by the large window looking out onto the pond that we overlook from our bedroom. And as I pushed the covers back and stood up, Kate, Kate pointed with her finger and said, There! Look! Do you see it? The blur of sleep uh, left my eyes. My eyes focused and sharpened and I saw it. It was the head of a river otter causing the surface of the still pond to ripple. Soon another river otter surfaced, and then another, and another, and another. We had a, a family of five river otters uh, fishing and swimming in the pond. Over the course of the next few weeks, until the ice became a solid sheet, I continued to see the otters, sometimes running on the skim ice, often surfacing in places where the ice had not formed. I took our big lab Denali out in the backyard uh, one morning, and I thought there was a, a trash bag rippling in an empty lot next to our house. Well, it was the five river otters all kind of wrestling together, and you can't, my, our dog is about 98 pounds, and she wanted to go wrestle with them. <laughs> Each time I saw those otters, though, I was, I was filled with joy. I smiled with joy. It was a, a joy to see them. Over Christmas, I learned a new word. That word is phonology. Phonology is the study of uh, when specific events happen in nature from year to year in a certain place. The idea of looking around for specific events happening in in nature is it's an old concept. Maybe you have been doing this, noting when the shoot of an iris breaks through the ground each spring, uh, noting when the corn is knee high, right? When the corn is high on, knee high on the 4th of July, it's going to be a, a good year, that's the saying. Or when the sap starts to flow, or, or when the maple leaves turn their most brilliant shade of red. Phonology helps us to slow down and take notice of what's going on around us. By slowing down and noticing what is going on around us, we are able to dispel the thoughts of nothing good happens around here, or can anything good come from this place? Jesus in John's gospel narrative observes what is happening around him paying attention to his surroundings, and Jesus invites people to also look around, take notice, and see what is happening around them. The words, come and see, are found in Jesus' calling the first disciples. 
And, and they're echoed by Philip as he calls uh, Nathaniel and shares about Jesus. If you want to look that up, it's John 1, 39. That's where Jesus first says to his first followers, come and see. And then in John 1, 46, which we just read. Come and see. It's an invitation to follow. To follow means to open one's eyes, to look around and take notice. Because following Jesus means following God's chosen one. The word that became flesh uh, and the light that darkness could not overcome. Those are all names given to Jesus in, in the opening chapter of John's gospel. Jesus tells Nathaniel, uh, his eyes will be opened as he follows Jesus to seeing even greater things. Imagine this. Heaven opened up. Angels of God ascending and descending upon God's chosen one. Earlier in the first chapter of John's gospel, John the baptizer says he has seen and testifies to Jesus being the son of God which can also be translated to mean God's chosen one. The Greek word uh, we translate as see or seen in this section of John's gospel is haran, which can also be translated to mean to know. To see is to know. Therefore, the call stories shared by John's gospel, come and see, are centered around this invitation to come and know. Take a moment to think about what Jesus is inviting his followers to both see and know. The invitation to come and see uh, through seeing uh, and, and know who Jesus is is to have our eyes opened to even greater things. And this is contrary to the oft-conveyed idea of having faith without sight. Sometimes we call it blind faith. So often the idea of faith is being, is being blind and it's lauded, yet John's gospel conveys a different message. Through Jesus' invitation to come and see and therefore come and know, we're invited to see what is in front of us, not just have blind faith. You see, sight often uh, is, is hard, and, and we get tripped up in the thought that we have a full understanding or complete knowledge of someone or something from what we see. Nathaniel's question uh, to Philip, uh, Philip's invitation of, you've got to see this is because Philip tells Jesus, uh, tells, tells him Jesus is the son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathaniel, like many other people, knew that Nazareth was, was a crossroads, a, a working town between uh, the Mediterranean Sea and the Sea of Galilee. Nazareth, in Nathaniel's mind, was in the middle of nowhere and on the wrong side of the tracks, filled with at undesirables, immigrants, and deplorables. Nathaniel may have even visited Nazareth and seen it with his own eyes, or he may have heard rumors about it, imagined what it looked like, and went along with what was commonly held, the, the stereotype about Nazareth, which caused him to ask Philip, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Friends, we only need to look back in the news cycle a few days to recognize how pervasive the idea of how we, can, uh, how we can ask if something good can come out of places we quickly misjudge or see as less than, and, and, and how these misjudgments and this pervasive idea is still prevalent. And, it, and we can see how, how hurtful these misjudgments and perceptions can truly be. John's gospel tells us God's chosen one comes from a, quote, crappy, unquote, place. 
As one person wrote in coming from this less than place, God pointedly asks us to welcome the chosen one when he comes to us as a stranger or as one of the least of these. We welcome people from the most unexpected places or the places we view as less than because Jesus came and Jesus came to us from a place where people questioned if anything good could come from it. Jesus' response to Nathanael reverses Nathanael's perspective. Nathanael follows the pointing of Philip to a place where Nathanael can encounter Jesus face to face. A quick question for you. How often are you willing to come and see when you feel like you already hold an idea, especially a negative idea, of who a person is, or where they are from, or what a place looks like? Friends, are we often willing to respond like Nathaniel to Philip's request to come and see when we already hold negative thoughts? You know, the interesting part of this story is, is in encountering Jesus, Nathaniel hears Jesus call him an Israelite without deceit. Nathaniel doesn't come because he wants to prove Philip uh, to Philip, nothing of value can come from Nazareth. Yet, rather, he comes out of curiosity, with his eyes wide open to see who this Jesus is. Nathaniel's curiosity and his open eyes are why Jesus says he is without deceit. Jesus speaks to Nathaniel's stereotypes and misplaced judgments found in the question, can anything good come from Nazareth, by telling Nathaniel, Follow me. Follow me and your eyes will be open to a new and greater understanding of who I am. You will see heaven and earth touch and angels uh, touching God's chosen one. In essence, Jesus is saying, don't judge a book by its cover. Look at the pages, the words there because they may open your eyes to a deeper and more complete vision than you currently hold. What would happen if we came to places and people we stereotype with curiosity and open eyes? On a deeper level, what does it mean to let go of stereotypes blinding us to people and places? What does the world look like if we pause, take a breath, and let go of the ideas we have built up and the ideas walling us off from our surroundings and from one another? Here are a few thoughts. Last Saturday, I paused to look out in the below zero cold of the morning. I knew it was cold, and I could have easily turned my attention to other things going on around me, saying, there's nothing going on outside because it's so cold out. However, by pausing and looking out into the light of the early morning sun, I saw movement. A pileated woodpecker sat on one of the skinny willow trees by the pond. House sparrows flitted from the stalks of the sunflowers at the edge of the yard to the bird feeders. A blue jay flew over and perched on the roof of a neighbor's house. And some goldfinches came to eat from the finch feeder. Curiosity helped me witness the movement of life amidst cold temperatures, bare trees, and snow blanketing the yard. Curiosity helped me to see life in the middle of winter, where it is easy to say, can there be anything good out there? Second thought. A number of years ago, I went to a town in the Sonoran Desert of Mexico with thoughts of what I would find there, desperately poor people with little joy and very little to give. Yet, when I arrived, my eyes were opened. 
And I found people who welcomed me into their homes, regardless of its size. I found uh, laughter, humor, and joy, the smiles of children who did not think of themselves as poor, a simple and beautiful way of living, strong faith, community, and care. By the end of the trip, I had a new name, Largo Palo, meaning big head uh, because of my hair. Uh, my hair gets really curly in humidity. I had uh, the gift of a plastic ring from a girl named Carla, who wrote on a scrap of paper in her best English, the present that ring the Jesus. I still have that scrap of paper in a notebook. And I think what Carla was saying is, here's a present. It is the ring of Jesus. I walked away from this trip with a new understanding. Eyes open wider to the people around me. Thought three, as I reflect on my own faith journey, I am grateful for the people who, like Philip, have come to me with good news and invited me to come and see. Jesus, even when I held different views and, and negative stereotypes, has come to these places. The invitations of these people have impacted my faith because they have led me or guided me to places where my curiosity about faith and God were met and my eyes were opened to God among us and the living word. Simply put, these invitations led me to places where I encountered the love and grace of Jesus and Jesus' voice saying, Come, follow, see greater things. The Gospel of John shares the call story of Nathaniel, who is not mentioned anywhere else in the Bible. Nathaniel encounters Jesus because Philip comes to him, shares the good news, and says, You've got to see this. Friends, we are invited to do the same. We are invited to share the good news by saying, come and see. One of the themes found over and over in John's gospel narrative is people who encounter Jesus invite others to encounter Jesus too. In essence, John's gospel is, is a way of saying, uh, we can point to Jesus spark curiosity about who Jesus is, and then guide people to places where they can encounter the one who says, you will see even greater things. Today, we are invited again into the call to open our eyes, to look around, and to take notice. What do you see? How is grace expanding your vision? How is grace helping you let go of the prejudices you hold? Where is there movement and life? What is making you say, you've got to come see this? Amen.
Please be seated. Let us now join our hearts together in a time of prayer. Let us pray. Gracious, abundant, almighty God, you know us beyond our prejudice, beyond our hurt, beyond our struggle. Call us in such a way that we choose to know that side of us as well. Help us to move past all of those things that make us try and hold ourselves up on a pedestal above others. Help us to step down and to see ourselves and our neighbors as you see us. Your love for us through Jesus Christ is deep, is profound. And we pray that as we choose to follow Jesus, we too might have that love for one another. We pray for those that are near and dear to us, remembering today especially Shirley as she undergoes surgery tomorrow in Duluth. Be with Doug and, and her family, be with the doctors and her medical team, and be with Shirley to feel a sense of your peace and our love with her. We pray, O oh God, for Emily. We pray for KC. We pray for the Blake family and for all of those things that we struggle to make sense of in this great world. We pray, O oh God, for those joys as well, the things that make us smile, the things that make us celebrate. We pray in thanksgiving for Jeannie and Julie who celebrate a birthday today, their first birthday, without their close family nearby. We pray, O oh God, for all of the things that we name now in silence. You call us, O oh God, to be your people, to be your church. And that means to be your hands and your feet, your voice, your love, your mercy, your grace in a world that so greatly needs you. Help us through your spirit to take this call, this need, and to go and be it. Through Jesus Christ, who taught us first to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us now meet the financial needs of the church as we receive our offering.
Gracious God, accept and use these offerings and the gift of our lives for building up the body of Christ in this world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please be seated. We have some news for the pews for you. Please uh, also take this insert home and mark your calendars for different things here at church and in the community. Um, a few that we'd just like to point out. We are um, extending an open invitation this January to join the Peace and Social Justice Committee. Um, Biz Peterson does an amazing job with this, and it would be really cool to get some more people to come and join us. We have a good time, um, and sometimes there's cookies, and, and, and so <laughs> I, I think you might want to help out with that. But So um, last week we were supposed to meet, the weather threw that off, so you've got your chance to come and check it out. Even if you're not sure you want to join, just come to the meeting and check it out, okay? It can't hurt. Um, four o'clock here at church in the parlor. There is a kitchen design team meeting today after worship in the parlor, um, so the, you have time to run downstairs, get your coffee and cookie, and then head back up to the parlor if you're on that team. Everybody is invited to join us downstairs after worship today for time of fellowship. Let us now stand and join in our closing hymn number 728. <laughs> Friends, go from this place knowing, uh, seeking justice, loving kindness, and walking humbling with, humbly with God. As we go from this place into the world with hope and faith, may the glory of the Lord shine upon us, the word of the Lord live within us, and the spirit of the Lord give us peace. And we all say, Amen. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you. You're invited to uh, greet one another with the signs of Christ's peace and, and welcome each other to this place. Yeah.